Good morning. Just want to welcome you to Praise Center Church for All Nations Morning Worship Service and Kingdom School. Uh, I am Lady Rhonda Deloach, and the pastor of the Praise Center Church for All Nations is my sweetheart, Apostle Gary Deloach. So just want to welcome you to our service. Um, this is what we do every Sunday. Just want to in invite you to come in if you're a guest to come stay, visit for a while, enjoy the word of God with us. And if you are a member, welcome, because you know we uh, love seeing our ministry family. So just so glad that you're here. So good morning, good morning. Just want to start with a word of prayer and then we're going to go right into kingdom school, amen. Father God, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. And we come thanking you and praising you and celebrating you and lifting you up and loving on you and worshiping you because you're worthy of all those things and more. You have um, done what we could not do for ourselves. You brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You saved us, filled us with your spirit for that we are eternally grateful, gave us eternal life, speaking of eternal, and we thank you, O oh God. And we pray, Father, that you will be glorified during these services on today, that you will be magnified, not just our services, but services everywhere. And we uh, just pray, God, that you would uh, not only just visit us, but that we would have habitation of your spirit, not just in this house, but in every house that's connecting with this service on today. And God, I profess every time I'm not the teacher. I'm not the teacher. Your Holy Spirit is our teacher. Teach us this day what you would have us to know about the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. Good morning. Good morning. And I just want to welcome you. I'm going to get started with kingdom school on today. I always like to begin with the de working definition we use for kingdom of God. Good morning, Julie. Uh, we use for the kingdom of God. And it is the governing influence of God as king. Uh, over his territory. Let me uh, continue on with that. The governing influence of God as king over his territory, uh, impacting his territory with his personal will, with his purpose and intent, producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflects God's desires and nature for his citizens. That's us. So just want to begin that way and want to uh, jump right in. We've been doing a series on knowing and operating in your kingdom assignment. Very important because everyone in the kingdom has an assignment. So knowing what that assignment is and operating in it is what we've been talking about. And especially how to operate in your kingdom assignment. Good morning, Sister Geraldine. Good morning how to operate in that kingdom assignment. The first way we talked about is with an excellent spirit. When we were um, doing the teaching out of Daniel with an excellent spirit, the second way that we're to operate in our kingdom assignment is by being faithful, by being faithful. And then the third way, which is what we completed just on last week, is with gladness. This is how we're to operate in our kingdom assignment. And the fourth and final way that we're going to talk about is by worshiping first. <laughs> no worship had to show up because we're praising our church for all nations, called to demonstrate worship in these last days. And so not just because that's the, the name of the ministry, but uh, actually because it is in scripture. So let's, let's go to the scripture. Let's begin reading. Let's get start digging in. Amen. So if you would, please go to Exodus chapter 20. If you have your Bible, if you have your Bible on your phone or your um, your Bible on your tablet or computer. But if you would go with me to Exodus chapter 20, you hear my pages turning. So, you know, I have my Bible, my Bible with me. Exodus chapter 20. And we're actually going to begin with the first verse. You know, sometimes people kind of jump right in there. But um just going to jump in and read up to the scripture that we're going to uh, really kind of focus on. Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 1, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, now let me set this up. This is when Moses went and got the commandments 
from the Lord. And this is him telling what the commandments are to the people. Now that he went up to Horeb and he's come down, he's given the people the commandments that God gave him for all of his people. And God said, uh, spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I'm getting excited just reading that. Thou shall have no other gods before me. That's not to say you can worship other gods and you put him first. That means there to be no gods in his presence whatsoever. So thou shall have no other gods before me. Number four or verse four, thou shall not make unto thee or unto yourselves any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You're to make nothing. And verse five is our key verse. Thou shalt not bow, shalt not, not, excuse me, bow thyself to them, these things that you've made, nor worship them, or excuse me, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Look at that. And so I want to go back to the word bow down. When you look it up, for those who like to study and use the concordance, uh, if you look that word up, bow down, it actually is the uh, refer uh, reference in the Hebrew part of the concordance, 7812. And it actually means to depress and it says IE, um, so uh, especially this is what the definition is, prostrate uh, or prostrate rather in homage to royalty or God. To prostrate in homage to royalty or God. Now I want to define um, homage because sometimes those uh, we say words that we don't define and people have an idea of what it may be, but they don't know exactly what it is. So let's define homage, special honor or respect shown publicly. Ooh, look at that. Special honor or respect shown publicly. So then this is, this is what we're talking about when we use the word homage. So to depress again, we're defining uh, what bow down is to depress, prostrate in homage to royalty or God, to bow self down. One of my favorite definitions, bow self. And let me tell you what's composed or comprised of self. That's your thoughts and that's your ways. So that's to bow your thoughts down. That's to bow your ways down, to crouch Fall down flat, humbly beseech, do make obeisance. Let me spell that word, O-B-E-I-S-A-N-C-E, -E, obeisance, akin to obedience. And I'm going to define obeisance in just a moment. Do reverence, make to stoop, and finally the word worship, because bow down and worship are used interchangeably in scripture. They have the very same Hebrew reference, reference number 7812, which means it's the exact same Hebrew word. So anytime you see bow down or worship, those words can be used interchangeably. So this is what we're talking about. By worshiping first, this is another way that we are to do our kingdom assignment. It's by worshiping first. Now let's define obeisance. Obeisance, a gesture expressing differential respect, such as a bow or curtsy. We've seen that before, maybe in a dance, or we've seen it before uh, in going before um, potentates or um, someone who's considered royalty. royalty. Um, another definition for obeisance, a movement of the body made in token of respect or submission. It's a gesture of the body made in token of respect or submission. 
didn't say it is your respect. It says it's a token. I love that. And then the final definition for obeisance we're going to use acknowledgement of another's superiority or importance. So all of this uh, is make uh, makes up this bow down and worship. To there's a, a something that there's an outward showing of worship. Whether it's physically bowing, many times you'll see in scripture where they fell down and worship, where they bowed the head and worship. You will see many times where you're going to see uh, they prostrated themselves. You, you'll you see that um, in scripture and it's all referring to worship. This is something that was done. Um, this is something that was taught. It didn't just show up. Um, during the time of Moses, when God was giving the commandments to the children of Israel, worship started way back in the garden. Hallelujah. Apostle teaches that uh, that word till when uh, God put um, the man in, uh, in the garden to till it. And that word till is a word for worship. And so worship began in the garden and it's something that is a part of what we're called to do. And so as we do our kingdom assignment, we are to worship. Why do we need to worship? We're going to get more into why we need to worship uh, on next week. But I do want to bring another scripture to your reading or uh, in your hearing rather, if you would go to Matthew chapter four, verse 10, many of you from Praise Center Church know where I'm going. Yes, indeed, because it's something that's actually in our vision statement, in our vision statement. Glory to God. So Matthew chapter four, verse 10, and let me set, uh, set this up as to um what this uh, passage is all about. Jesus in the previous chapter, he has been baptized of John the Baptist. Holy Spirit has come upon him. And now um, he has been driven in chapter four into the wilderness, driven into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days. So this is for his ministry. This is to, um, as he's going into the wilderness, he's fasting. He's going through a time of temptation, proving him and testing him before he goes into his time of ministry, full time of ministry. So then let's read, actually starting with verse one, Matthew chapter four, verse one. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, now this is Satan talking to Jesus. If you be, or if you are the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Uh, in other words, you prove that you're the son of God. If you actually are the son of God, of course, Jesus knew he was the son of God. But he had nothing to prove to Satan. If you are indeed the son of God, why don't you make these stones to become bread? Uh, and that was only to get Jesus to um, break the fast and to uh, begin to eat. And so look at what Jesus said. Verse four, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, on the highest point of the temple. And saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, which we know he is, cast thyself down for it is written. Look at Satan trying to, um, beat Jesus at his own game. When Jesus came with, it is written, he was using the sword of the spirit. Now, if you agree with that, please uh, reply by saying amen. So Jesus came using the sword of the spirit in the time of temptation and um, cut uh, the enemy, uh, cut the devil, cut Satan using the word of God and backed him up. And so then he comes with another temptation. And he asks, and he says to him, if you're the son of God, for it is written, he said, cast down thyself, excuse me, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, 
Now, some of you already know where that's found. It's found in Psalm 91. So he's saying, okay, since he's going to use scripture, I'm going to use the scripture, but I'm going to twist it a little bit. That's why it's important that we study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There is a wrong way to divide the word of truth. And Satan is doing it right here so that he can persuade Jesus to do something that goes against what he needs to be doing. So then what does Jesus do? Excuse me, let me continue. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest, thy, uh, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Here it goes, using the sword of the spirit again on him. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So then he's telling Satan who he is. I'm part of the Godhead. You should not tempt me because I am God. So then go. let's go to verse eight again. The devil, he backs him up, but the devil comes back for more. The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Mm the kingdoms and the glory. Now we know in the, um, the um, prayer that Jesus teaches um, his disciples towards the end of the, the prayer, which a lot of people call the Lord's prayer. It was when he was teaching the disciples how to pray. Remember what Jesus taught them at the end of that prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So the kingdoms and the powers and the glory all belongs to God, not to Satan to give. So then he says, he, he took Jesus up, shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. This is Satan talking to Jesus. If you will fall down and worship me. Yes, Lord. And so then what does Jesus do? He takes out the sword of the spirit one more time, cuts him for the final time for that day and says, get thee hence or away with you, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Now in the, um, in the vision statement of the church, there are 11 points to the vision. The first one is to, to present unto the father, true worship and worshipers, the praise in our church for all nations exists to worship God and to love him with all of our hearts. Matthew four and 10 worship comes before service. Look at this passage again in verse 10. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. If you remember back in Exodus when we did the reading, when God himself, the father, is telling Moses to tell the people, you're not to um, put any other gods before me. You're not to make anything, um, no graven images. Hallelujah. To um, bow yourselves down to them or serve them. Look at how they're interconnected. Look at how worship and service. And when you look throughout scripture, and I'm going to bring some more scriptures on next week, where you see worship, service, worship and service, service and worship. They're interconnected. Why are they interconnected? Because when we worship God, that's where we get our, our instruction. That's where a uh, part of our dialogue. See, people thought that prayer is just the only method of dialogue between us and God. Not so. When we worship, we're communicating our heart to our father. We're communicating our heart to our God as we worship. And he communicates his heart to us. When we go into his secret place and we go and we worship him, he begins to speak to us. Um, Isaiah chapter three talks about us going to the mountain of the Lord. Hey, bless you. God bless you. Good morning, Good my morning, sweetheart. sweetheart. You're looking so handsome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. You're beautiful. Thank you so much. 
And so in Isaiah chapter three, where it talks about how um, we will go to the mountain of the Lord's house mm -hmm. and worship and what would happen that even we're going to the um, worship and in Zion, the place of God's presence, the word is there. Mm -hmm. The law is there. God begins to give us his word. He gives us his law while we're in his presence. Glory to God. And is there anything you'd like to add before I move forward? You're doing quite well. Thank you. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you for the compliment. And so this is what happens. We get God's words. We get his instructions. We get his commandments, how to do the thing while we're in his presence. Yes. Remember what Moses says. He's like, if uh, your presence doesn't go with us, I don't want to leave this place. Because that's where the instruction count comes from. It's out of his presence. Yes, uh, prayer is part of getting into his presence, uh, presence, but so is worship. Glory to God. And so this is why we are to continue to come into worship him, come before his presence, because our service is us carrying out the instruction we've been given while in the presence. Our service is us carrying it out, how to carry out the assignment that he's given us. He gives us the specifics while we're in worship. You want to find out answers to different things? Get into the presence of the Lord. This is what God wants us to do first before we go off serving. And I like to use this example, and I'm going to actually end with this example. Uh, many people know, and you've heard this before, many people know that when we go out to restaurants, um, many times, oftentimes, I get water with lemon, with lemon, but with no no ice. All right, with no ice. <laughs> Standard. That's right. Water with no ice. Um, so, for a, a person to to rather ask me, not ask me what I would like, a server, if you will, someone who's giving me service, for them to give me. The sister Geraldine knows no ice. That's it. So then for someone to bring me a glass of water with ice is service wasted. Is time wasted? Is energies wasted? Especially after you directed them to bring you water. Oh, and this is them being preempted. Uh, this is them doing it ahead of time without asking me what I want or how I want it. See, many times we presume to know what God wants. We presume to know how he wants to do a thing because sometimes we look at other people and take that as our cue and as the standard rather than asking the father. And so when we don't do that, many times our efforts are wasted and we have to go back and ask. And we're sometimes offended when our um, offering or our service is rejected. We get offended. We get yeah. upset. We get angry. We get raw like um, Cain did because we don't do it the right way. So then we find out the right way in his presence. And then when we do that, then we go out and we carry it out. This is why we want to worship first before we go into any service before. And many times uh, you'll see people come and they'll pray before they uh, um, start off the service. They start it off with prayer or even before the worship team comes out, they may have a word of prayer. But what about getting into worship first? Woo, he may change the songs if you get into worship first. What about um, getting into worship first before um, ushering? What about getting into uh, uh, worship first before ministering to your husband or to your children or to your, your wife? What about getting into worship first, into the presence of the Lord before we go to the job? What about worshiping first, whatever the assignment is? Because sometimes we only look at what we do in the house of God as our assignment, but um, God has assigned to us and we're married. We have been given ministry of a spouse. Yes. Hallelujah. And many times we need to know how to be a good spouse and who better than to teach us how to be a good spouse than God himself, mm -hmm. the one who instituted marriage. And to tell us how he wants to be worshipped. That's been in my uh, 
morning manifestation. Yes. How that uh, he gives us instructions as to how he wants to be worshipped, particularly in spirit and in truth. Gives us cues. Sure. So we, we're not going to assume. Yes. You know, that we can do it any old kind of way. That's right. And in order to serve effectively or effectively in the kingdom of God, to effectively do your kingdom assignment and your service to the Lord, we need in order for us, let me not say you, in order for us yes, to do yes, it, yes, yes. we need to get into his presence. We need to worship him. Remember that word worship means to bow self down. It means to make obeisance. It means um, to depress or prostrate yourself before, uh, to give homage to, homage to, uh, uh, to royalty or to God. So before we go and do anything for the day, because remember your spouse can be your uh, an assignment because it's something that God has given to you. Your children uh, will be, I don't want to say can be, is an assignment because it's something God has given you to be steward over. Um, your, not just your, um, your family, but your job, whatever you've been assigned to do on your job, whatever you've been assigned to do in the house of God, whatever you've been assigned to do, period. You're to do it as unto the Lord, but before you start doing it, you're to get into worship first. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue with this on next week because we have more to shed on this because this is such a good um, and actually the most important of all the four. Save the best for last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Thank you for joining me for um, Kingdom School on this morning. Um, it has been a pleasure um, just sharing the word of God with you. And at this time, we're going to transition into our morning worship morning service. Worship. And um, we will receive the word of God after some announcements. The word of God given to us by our pastor, mm -hmm. Apostle Gary Deloach. Glory fresh to God. oil, fresh wine. Is here in this place. Fresh oil and fresh wine is revealed in that place where you are. The wine of Holy Spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, let's talk about Holy Spirit. Let's talk about who he is and why he is. Yes. Let's talk about how he has been sent mm -hmm. to empower us to have daily victory. That's it. Not just every now and then, every day, people of God. That's right. Victory, the song that uh, I learned years ago, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. Oh, and I told the Savior, yes. get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Well, we have victory because of the empowerment of Holy Spirit in our life. Glory to God. He is the power of God. Yes. Resident. And that's a that's a word that's going to be a key word today. Resident or residency. Mm -hmm. Resident inside. I don't want to get to it too quick, but yes. we have him every day with us. Yes. He's just not around us. No. As he was around the disciples, as he was around Old Testament believers. I'm just trying to preface and set up my message today. He was around them to enable them to yes. do certain things. Yes at certain or specific times. That's right. But it was not a situation where, or reality, where he was resident in them. That's right. We have a residence, right? Yes. Some people have places of residence or places of abode. That's your permanent house. Amen. Amen. That's where people can find you. That's where you settle down. Amen. And I want to talk about why you're Power. If you're operating in the power of God, mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. All right. And there's a reason, too, that the enemy fears power operating in you on a daily basis. He's not afraid. And I want the, the believers who are not baptized to get this today. You know, 
people can say, well, I'm, you know, satisfied right, right mm -hmm. here. I repented. Now I'm saying that uh, I changed my mind. I confessed my sins. And now I'm a member of the body of Christ. But you have to go on and be baptized. And Holy Spirit, because you're not going to be able to defeat the enemy every day. That's right. You're not going to be able without the power of God. We're going to show you today where Jesus was not willing to go on in ministry without the power in his life, the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. And I want to say, like I heard my mother and some of the other saints say, come on, if Jesus needed and had to have Holy Spirit, come on now. Him, how about and what about us? Jesus. Jesus, he's Jesus. He's Jesus, the son of God. Come on, made flesh in the earth. And he dwelt among us, but he established a pattern. Yes, he did. A precedent. Come yes. on, that Holy Spirit is necessary for daily victory. Anybody listening to me? Daily yes. victory. Who wants to have victory over Satan every day? He's coming. Come on, the prince of this world coming, Jesus says. And find it nothing in me. Somebody say he comes. He comes. But he is we over but we overcome him. Come on. Yes. Yeah, I'm not making we a big deal. I'm not making a big deal about him coming. Let him come. Hey. So you know, a good movie that said, you know, a war's about to happen or uh, it's about to be a, 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 a gun battle and yes. an okay corral. <laughs> yes. Let him come. Let come him on. come. Let him go. We, my, my, my stepfather, my dearly departed. Father, uh, Jamie Snow used to say, you know, let him come. I've got something for him. I got something for him. He was an old marksman <laughs> in one of the world uh, wars. Amen. Amen. He could handle weapons. He could defend the household. He could defend the ground and the, and the, and the land that he possessed. And with power inside of us, we are, come on, we don't mind the enemy come. He yeah. comes. He comes. And he finds nothing in me to identify with, but he better know that he's gonna know that he's been in a battle and he knows that he cannot win. Yes. The Bible says to us, even at the end of the, the Bible revelation, we win, sweetheart. That's right. We win every time. Anybody believe that we win? Amen. Yes, amen. So be not afraid. Don't be don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Yes. But don't be afraid. That's it. Holy Spirit in us. Gives us so many things, and I've just been enjoying myself reliving the teachings, just studying, mm -hmm. reliving everything that I've been taught, going back, affirming some things, and even more revelation that just uh, makes me open my eyes wider to say, listen, we have uh, grossly underestimated the power of Holy Spirit in our lives. That's right. Can we agree to that? Yes, we do. Uh, when, yes, when I look and see that sometimes people have allowed the enemy to defeat them, we've been defeated. Come on, we, we, we've we allowed him to, you know, yet to forgive me. You know, I want to sometimes, I use the dialect of our young people. Sometimes the enemy tries to back us down, back us off, and they say punk us out or make us feel like we don't, you know, we cannot stand that there is no answer and cause us to, to, to surrender? No. We have the power of God yes. that will overcome it. When they overcame him, Revelation, by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. And what? The word. Let me say the word. The word. Of their testimony. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The word. The of word. Their testimony. And the word of God was dwelling in them. I found something this morning that really just blessed me to find that, um, you know, in some texts, you can have a word meaning or origin yes. that means one particular thing. Uh, the meaning is one thing. And then another, it can be the same thing. Yes. And another, it can be a different thing. That's right. But, but I found the word parakletos, mm -hmm. how that it meant. It shows up in another passage of scripture that I had not known the word paraclete was used for that. So I'm going to talk about that. The power of God. Somebody say, yes. amen. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now, if you have him. So, but if you don't, it's not a downer because you can get him today. He comes to those who are already saved. Yes. He comes because salvation has come. Yes. Now, we know those who have received salvation but have not yet received 
the baptism in Holy Spirit. We want to urge you to ask him. Only says is ask. Yes. Amen. Believe and receive. Amen. And then, but say with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Is resident. Is resident. Within me. Within me. Hallelujah. Well, sweetheart, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Go for it. it. I need you. Well, if you hang with us, we are in prayer revival this week. Family prayer revival. Yes. Again this week. We want you to join us because I believe that God is moving across this land. Yes. We're seeing pockets of revival here and there. Amen. But the ultimate is going to be worldwide revival. Yes. But that's how it starts in groups and prayer groups. I, I, my mother gave me a book when she worked at a uh, Goodwill store many years ago. Mm -hmm. She would uh, have an eye to see some things. She said, I'm going to get this for him. I know he would love to get into this. And she brought me an old salt down book that talked about revival that broke out in England mm -hmm. many, many years ago and talked about how it broke out, sweetheart, mm -hmm. and talked about this prayer group of ladies. I wonder why it was always ladies. I wonder why it was always women. Where were the brothers at? Come on. Hey, uh, we're, we're, the, the, the I women, guess we're more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. To the move of God. Now, that could be true. Uh, it was a woman that showed up at the tomb before the That's brothers. That's right. They were back in the room in despair, despairing because Jesus, their Lord, had been crucified. But they didn't remember. Come on, fear can make you lose your memory mm. of everything that Jesus had taught oh, them. Oh, yes. He says, I'm coming back. Come on. That's right. Uh, I, I'm going I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be uh, killed and I'm going to rise again on the third day. But they were just overwhelmed with fear that they were going to be next. Yes. But the women showed up. So in this book, it simply said that revival broke out. Mm -hmm. Just Priscilla, you appreciate this. Praise Center, those of you who love prayer, you will appreciate this. Revival broke out out of that prayer group because they are praying behind the scenes. Yes. Somebody wants revival. Come on. Yes. Some things have to happen for revival to break out and to break forth. Somebody has to make sacrifices. Yes. They were sacrificing every day, every night, praying all through the day for revival. And the, the book said that one of the ways they prayed was constantly pleading the blood. Mm. Pleading the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. So they were overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. And by the word of their testimony. And at the same time, releasing revival yes. throughout that nation. So yes, prayer revival, you see it on the screen. This week, Wednesday, uh, July the 7th, and Thursday, July 8th, at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time or Central Standard, as you may call it. And the number to get in is on the screen. You don't want to miss this opportunity. 712-770-4010. And the access code is... 577327 hashtag. Hashtag. Or pound. For, or pound, as you can call it. So come in and join us this week. Amen. One more thing, and I'm going to jump in, sweetheart. Okay. Those of you that would like to partner with the ministry, and you would like to know more about the ministry, you want to sow a seed, you've been blessed already. You've experienced healing in your life. And I love to say that because I know that I know that I know that there are many who experience healing yes. through this ministry. Yes. Sometimes we get calls from people who are, are uh, messages sent to us through others that they remember the healing that came many years ago mm -hmm. or recently through this ministry. That means I believe we are good ground. Amen. Because we don't do things, ask you to do things that we don't do. That's right. We believe in being it, Amen. doing it, come Amen. on, living it. Amen. And being all about it because we are assigned to represent who? Him, That's our right. Father in the earth, to be ambassadors. Yes. And an ambassador is one who represents the kingdom of Woo! all that come on kingdom teacher. Help me with yes. that. Yes. Every, every nation usually has an embassy. Yes. Amen. Inside of that nation. Yes. Or in a particular city of that nation. But those who are from that nation can go to that embassy 
the yes, Lord. Yes. In the times of trouble, they can go to that embassy That's right. and be protected. Yes. And declare their uh, sovereignty from anything that's going on there by going to their nation's embassy. That's right. And that country has to protect them, right? Yes. Amen. So as ambassadors, we represent the kingdom that we are from. Yes. Amen. Amen. So yes, uh, so we believe in being uh, ambassadors and being real for God. So if you want to sow, the information is there for you and... And it's um, dollar sign PCC FAN. If you want to go uh, to give through Cash App or PayPal, just by going to PayPal or typing in paypal.me forward slash Pray Center Church, whether you use Google or Yahoo or whatever um, uh, browser that you use. It's called a browser, by the way. I keep saying that. But um, if you want to just go to any browser and type that in, it will take you to where you can give to the ministry of Praise Center Church. Yes. Well, we're ready to go into the Word of God now. All right. Come on, awesome. run with me. Somebody say with me. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the devil. Say, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of the enemy. I'm not afraid of the enemy. Because the power of God. Because the power of God. That brings me victory. That brings me victory. Dwells within me. Dwells within me. I refuse to walk around being afraid. That's it. Come on, come on. Fear has torment. Yes, it does. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But uh, I like what Paul says to Timothy. The first word he says, but up. Uh, power. Say it again, but up. Uh, power. Oh, you can see power is an emphasis today. But up. Uh, power. What kinds of power has God, what kind of power has God given us, sweetheart? I'm going to ask you to kind of be ready and be my note. My note, uh, my notary, uh, okay. or to my notary, or uh, to stamp some <laughs> things. Come on, yes, my, yeah, or, or to look up some things for me. What kind of power? Or oh, I, I, everybody's ready today. Everybody chiming in. I'm not afraid. That's right, because we have power to overcome. Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. Yes, death. Where is your uh, grave? Where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Yes. He overcame it. He got up out of the grave and said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. I've yes. defeated every enemy. Yes. I've defeated, hallelujah, hallelujah, the last enemy, which is death. So we don't have to be afraid of death because death has been defeated. Yes. Oh, he's alive. Jesus is the life. Uh, and the next week, he talks, one of those lines said, uh, uh, death has been, uh, how is it, in the grave, death, death has been defeated, and the grave has, has been, been denied. denied. Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ is risen. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. He defeated the last enemy yes. called the death. From yes. The power to get up. And when he said that all power mm -hmm. in heaven and earth is given unto me. Yes. Exousia power. That is the power, hallelujah, to, the, to have jurisdictional power over territory. Woo! The authority to rule. Yes. He's been given jurisdictional power. Yes. Over all heaven. Now huh? in all heaven. In all earth. All of that is subject unto me. People of God. No matter what we encounter in the earth realm, we have power. Even in the original creation, yes, in the beginning, he gave Adam some powerful keys. Yes, he did. He told him, gave him the power to be fruitful and multiply, but the word subdue. Yes. To subdue, glory to God. Woo! To make everything come under. I, I looked know. up another definition is to, is to, uh, um, Everything to subdue everything under your feet and bring it to its original purpose. Yes. Cause it to function in its original purpose. You, Adam, ought to cause the earth to function in the original purpose mm. that God set in place for it. We are as believers, and hallelujah, since since we've been given the keys back, yes, Jesus came as the last. Adam, yes. come on, the last Adam, 
the last man and came and restored the authority that Adam gave up to Satan. Yes. To subdue the earth. So now that's what kingdom is about. Yes. Subduing the earth, bringing it under our feet. Come on. As an example, I saw, sweetheart, mm -hmm. was as in a wine press, trampling out, trampling the wine press. Yes. To subdue is to trample the enemy under our feet, All right. bring the power of God into his original purpose so that we can have kingdom function going on in the earth right now. The kingdom of God is here already. Yes. And to carry it out, he knew that we were going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. To operate and function in our kingdom assignment in the earth. So he gave him uh, the exousia. Yes. The power to rule. Gave him, he had dunamis, dunamis power, inherent power. He says, he says, the things that I've done, disciples, mm -hmm. the works that I've done, you're going to do also and greater works. Greater. You're going to do because I'm getting ready to leave you. Yes. I'm going to my father, but I'm not, not going to leave you comfortless. Okay. He said, Holy Spirit won't come if I don't go away. That's it. So when I go away, I'm going to make sure that you have the same power. Come on. Mm -hmm. Not another Holy Ghost. No. But the same power yes. that calls me to function and work these miracles. Yes. All right. Glory to God. So today I'm going to talk about uh, how the power of God has been sent to take up residency. I think I left off last week. I made a couple of points. The proof of the power of God in us. Mm -hmm. There were two major things that God sent us as proof. Two major deposits. Number one was power. Mm -hmm. And the second was speaking in tongues. To prove the Holy Spirit's residence on the inside of us. Now, I've, I've talked and talked about tongues. I want to kind of shift, you know, even though I named Holy Spirit first and then uh, speaking in tongues second, I want to shift back to why the power is so important. Yes. The power was and is so important. Yes. Acts 1 and 8. You've heard it over and over. Go to Acts 1 and 8. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By the time we get through the day, uh, I, I think somebody's going to feel so charged up. Glory to God. Lord God, it'd be like somebody sticking a, sticking a, a, a piece of metal of something, a fork into an electrical socket, and you get a charge. And you see on the cartoon, on the, the caricature, where the man's hair right. spreads all over his head. Yes. He's overcharging super. He gets an electrical shock. Yes. <laughs> I believe when we're in the presence, as Lady Rundle was teaching this morning, we get all kinds of charges. Mm -hmm. We get all kinds of instructions from the Lord. Yes. We get all kinds of uh, challenges and we are mm -hmm. empowered to release God's mind in the earth. Yes. God's power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's passion in the earth. So then, one and eight, he says, to the disciples, he promises them, amen, and he encourages them to do what he had done. Yes. Jesus was not willing to go forth with ministry without waiting, without being baptized himself mm -hmm. in Holy Spirit. We're going to find that in Acts 10, 38, how Jesus, how God anointed yes. Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. God anointed him. Yes. With Holy Spirit with the Holy Ghost and with power. And after he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, smeared upon, filled with the Holy Ghost and power, then sweetheart, Jesus mm -hmm. went out. That's right. And the Bible said he went out healing the sick. Come on. And doing good, casting on all forms of the devil. And, and doing good for God was with him. him. After he received well, when did Jesus receive baptism? Of Holy Spirit? Yes. Hold on, hold on. Oh. So, <laughs> somebody put on the screen, come on, in the uh, um, comment section, tell me when Jesus was baptized with Holy Spirit. When was Jesus baptized with Holy Spirit? I want you to keep an eye on the Holy Spirit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Baptism of Holy Spirit in Jesus' life. Uh, 
for 1,000, Alex, come on. <laughs> you know, when, when you were talking about that when read, Jesus man. was baptized of the Spirit, and it also made reference that he went out in the power. So you're, 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 you're going ahead in my notes. What? Well, I mean, okay, right I, there. I'm dealing with when he was baptized. Okay. Yeah, he did. He went out. To, I should have said Acts 10, 38, because that's in the night of the scriptures. Yes. To show you what happened after. But you think Holy Spirit for being so astute to you didn't know, see that. He did. He went out. I will go ahead and say it. That's Luke 4 14. After he had, now this was after he had come out of the wilderness. Yes. Before he went into the wilderness, he had a baptismal experience. Yes. Do we see any answer yet? No mm -hmm. answer. We're, we're gonna shorten the time and give some time. Amen. But he had had a baptismal experience in Holy Spirit. That would empower him yes. before he went out and really started doing the works. Everybody's ministry should start with the fast. Ooh, amen. Everybody, everybody's ministry should start and resemble, I mean, just like Jesus did. He, he taught his disciples. Yes. You go and you wait. Yes. In the upper room until you be endued. That word for endued, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but. The second way is right here now. Yes. Until you are endued. The word endued means clothed. Wow. Clothed. Clothed upon. In other words, when you go there, you're going to be clothed upon with a power suit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not per that, that is not temporary, but it's going to be permanent. It was a suit that they needed to have on to do the works, not only that he did, yes. but greater works. Yes. If we digress back to the Old Testament prophets, remember Elisha received a double portion of what his predecessor, Elijah, his master had upon him. Upon him. Why was it necessary? Because he was going to do greater works than his predecessor had done and he was going to go into area he was going to go into mean and dangerous territory yes he was going to go into pagan nations and pagan cities we're going to encounter things demonic demonic representations that possibly we've never seen before sometimes what is this we're at what is this at work what is this kind of devilry? Is this some kind of new devilry or new demon? He let them know you're going to do greater works. Elisha did more miracles than his master Elijah did. Yes, he did. Glory Twice, to God. Twice as many. And the only one the only ones who did more than Elisha, the only one was Jesus of Jesus Nazareth. Himself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you think that we don't need a double portion? We need a double portion of Holy Spirit. We need a refresh. Hey, glory to God. We need refreshing in Holy Spirit. Too many people are being defeated who are testifying to Holy Spirit in their life, but yes. you're being defeated by minimal things. Yes. You've been defeated by small foxes. You've yes. been defeated by things that I mean, you should easily overcome. The power in you is greater than the power just to heal a little small pain. But the power in you is the power to raise the dead. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's time for us to be it. Yes. It's time for us to stop minimizing Holy Spirit in our life. That's it. It's time for us, hallelujah, to stop devaluing. Yes. Holy Spirit. He's more than what you used him for. Yes. He's more than what somebody told you. But, you know, the Holy Spirit not going to do this. No, no. He is the power of God yes. on the inside of us. Huh? Yes. Glory to God to begin to bring deliverance, to even bring salvation, to yes. counsel to comfort, to, yes. to reveal, to expose, yes. hallelujah to God, to bring the mind of Christ, to bring things that are not into existence, yes. to create and call things that be not yes. as though they were. Yes. We have the same spirit of faith That's right. that was operating in Jesus. Yes, We can call things that are not there. Come on, we can decree a thing and it shall be established under us. Hey, established under us. You need healing? Call it. 
return the report. Whose report do you believe? Yes. I know the doctors said what they said. I know they've been trained in medical study, but I know God, and I have Jesus on the inside of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I have the greater testimony yes. on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God. What, what did the Bible say? It is the power. Paul said, it's the power that brings, the gospel is the power that brings yes. salvation to every man that believes it. Yes. And even Hebrews, he said, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes. It pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. How do you get up the joints and marrow of the bones? It's a thought, it's a deserter of the thoughts when something is going on, we don't know what's happening. Yes. Just rely on Holy Spirit. Yes. He'll tell us exactly what's going on in the room. He'll tell us exactly what's been hidden behind closed doors. Yes. He will tell us exactly how to overcome the attack of the enemy yes. on your family. Do I have any believers yes. in the room today? Yes. Glory to God. I'm ready to preach this today. You are Glory ready to preach. To God. You are ready to preach. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stop minimizing. Stop under stop uh, underestimating. Yes. Stop devaluing the power of God that's on the inside of you. It's time for the apostolic church to rise up and be the church. I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to me the other night. He said, Tell him, son, to rise up and let the church be the church. Yes. He says, My church. It is not in the earth uh, just to look good. My church is not in the earth, uh, hallelujah, just to compete and be in competition with other reformations yes. and other persuasions. But my church is in the earth, hallelujah. hallelujah. I build my church to bring forth my kingdom. Yes. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I want to say that the ecclesia is alive and well because Holy Spirit is driving the church. Yes, hallelujah. What's the driving and motivating force behind the church in the miracles of yes. in the signs of in the wonders? There'll be miracles, signs, and wonders. There will be miracles, signs, and wonders as we worship, as we take the word out, of, as we demonstrate. That's our word, praise center. Yes. We're called to demonstrate, demonstrate. praise and worship in the yes. last days. Of, there shall be a performance yes. when Holy Spirit is in your life. Hallelujah. Listen at me. When Holy Spirit is resident in your life, resident. there will be a performance of that thing. What did the angel tell Mary? He told her that which is in you yes. is of the Holy Ghost. Woo. We saw that the Holy Ghost was around before baptism came on the day of Pentecost. That's right. Before the first century church was begun. But it was the Holy Spirit yes. that planted the seed of God yes. on the inside of that woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rock -hop, that ability, amen, to have progeny. Yes. We can birth through Holy Spirit. Ooh. How do we birth our yeah, glory to God? How do we birth our deliverance through the power of Holy Spirit. I'm looking at somebody today that God says, now begin, you underestimated Holy Spirit. God's been wanting to birth by the power of Holy Spirit in you. Birth a ministry. Come on. Birth a fresh oil anointing. Come on. Birth a new business. Uh, hallelujah. That's going to bless the kingdom and your family. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. To birth a fresh prophetic anointing that you've never operated in. You've, you've done a few things uh, but there's been fear and timidity. But let Holy Spirit yes. be large in you today. He, he will speak. Yes. Come on. He will speak. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We talked about he is our prayer language. He's the ability to speak. And Jesus says, I'm going to speak of myself. Yes. And Holy Spirit won't even speak of himself. That's it. He will speak to you and tell you what's mine. Yes. And then he's going to give it to you. That's right. Ooh, what can I have in the Lord today? What can I do? Come on. Worship 
without restriction. David got that revelation yes. about a new priesthood. But the Holy Spirit today mm -hmm. helps us to begin to do things, greater things, greater. that we didn't even see Jesus do. Hallelujah. Now, somebody's afraid to say that because it's like, we taking something from Jesus? No. Or we, did, or coming, or we uh, uh, come on, uh, disparaging Jesus? No. Jesus said that to his own disciples. He says, Holy Spirit in you yes. is going to allow you to do greater works. Yes. That, John, go, go to that sweet John 14. Oh, anybody ready for greater works? Yes. Anybody for greater than church? Yes. Mm -hmm. The greater than Jonah is here with us. Yes. Jonah did some good things. A greater yes. than Solomon. Solomon was a notable king. Yes. Son of David built a tabernacle. Amen. The Shekinah glory came in that tabernacle. He built. Hallelujah. And we, we, we got a documentation of how praise ushered the glory in, yes. in Solomon's tabernacle. When the people made one sound, uh, ooh, we're in the time of sounds. Yes. Uh, op the opening of heavens, releasing sounds. There was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind on the day of Pentecost. Right. But in Solomon's tabernacle, there was a sound. When the people made a sound, as heard in praising, yes. making one voice as heard in praising, Boom, the heavens opened up That's right. and the Shekinah glory, okay. the conscious manifest presence of God revealed came down in that tabernacle. So a greater than Solomon is even here today. Yes. A greater than those. Jesus is here and he said, I'm going to pray the Father that he will send Holy Spirit back to you so that you can do the greater. Anybody ready? Some people are satisfied with church. Come on now. Come on, man. Is that John 14, 12? 14, 12. Let it come yes. To a greater. Look, come on. If anybody, let me know. I, I, I'm, I'm ready for greater than church. Yes. People are locked into having a good church service, a good presentation. All oh, the choir was good, but what's the anointing there? Oh, mm. the musicians were good, but do, you know, we, we, we praise the Lord a lot last night, just watching praises, uh, people praising the Lord on YouTube because yes. we failed real praising. We failed real worship. Come on. We didn't want to watch a movie. We just wanted to praise God as we often do. Yes. And we were struck. My wife was just saying, I love to see when musicians will praise the Lord yes, and Lord. not think that they are exempt because they play the music and yes. think that that's the only way they're praising. But yes. let me tell you something. The music, the, 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 the instrument has no voice unless the player come on, puts the voice there. That's it. And the player needs to be anointed to play anointed music. That's right. Not sitting there holding up a telephone, video recording themselves. Mm -hmm. Come on, well, that's not an anointing. But no. the anointing destroys and breaks the yokes. Yes. I'm ready for a greater than church. Yes. We have greater inside of us to play and destroy the yokes of us. Yes. To pray and bring forth, forth melodies from heaven. Yes. The minstrel is supposed to bring melodies from heaven. Come on, to rain down upon the congregation. Yes. Come on, uh, revelation from heaven. Yes. Come on, revelation that we've not heard. Come on, yes. things that have not been brought forth. Yes. And the season will to even affect times and seasons. Yes. Jesus told them, he said, it's not for you to know the times and seasons that the Father has within his power. That's but right. guess what his next statement was? But you shall be, ooh, ooh, come on, seasons that were not unknown, could not be known by you. Now you're going to have the agency yes. of Holy Spirit to begin to endow you because you're going to be endued, clothed upon with yes. the power suit to understand what's in the realm of the Spirit. Yes. Glory to God. John 14, 12. What did he say? He oh. says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works. Now, the, the, so, so, holy baby. Yeah. You can see my excitement is more than I can bear. <laughs> more 
than I can contain. Do you know where? Yeah, from? yeah. More than I can contain. Because if anybody is going to disparage Jesus, he's doing it himself. Yes. But he has said this as a footnote. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, uh, as something to look forward to in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh, who am I preaching to, to today? In the future, you've been uh, amazed by the works I've done. Yes. Remember when he did the miracle and cursed the fig tree? Yes. They heard it when he cursed it. Yeah, they did. But they really thought nothing about it. No, they didn't believe it. Or else they wouldn't have been shocked. You said what? They didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. Yes. Simply, come on, we might as well tell it like it is. Yes. They really didn't believe it. No. They're with Jesus. Yes. The Son of God. Yes. Who's acting out in front of them. That's right. Who's demonstrated the power that's in him. Yes. In front of them. Come on. He's, he's, he's carrying out a mission from heaven in front of them. Yes. They've seen him do some other things, but yet they didn't believe. So when they're coming back, that fig tree that was not producing in the season. Yes. Jesus cursed it. And they looked, said, look, master, the fig tree is dead. And you have to let them know, come on, don't you believe? Did I not say? Yes. Then he says to them, if you have faith like this, yes. if you believe like this, y'all yes. better help me preach today. Come on, Apostle Chris, help me preach. I see you. Come on. Uh, he's, he let them know, if you can only believe like this, yes. somebody right there, if I can believe like this, if I can believe like this, if I can pray like this, yes. uh, Jesus even taught them how to pray. If I can confess like this, if I can call down the blessings of heaven like this, yes. if I can believe like this, I can have exactly what I say. If I can operate in the law of the power of words, yes. there's a law of words that even the centurion understood that Jesus was amazed by. Yes. He understood the law of faith is the law of words. Yes. It's closely related, close kin to the law of words. Jesus went, uh, whether Jesus was with his disciples, here comes a centurion. Uh, the centurion went to him and said, Master, my servant is at home, grievously sick. Yes. He said, if you would speak the only word. He didn't ask Jesus. That's right. Come on. Go look at it. Yes. He didn't ask you. Did you see where he asked Jesus? No. He didn't ask Jesus. He made a statement for the ages. Yes. He said, if you would speak the word only, he will be here. Yes. If you would just speak, he understood the power of a kingdom word. Yes. Uh, he understood the power of someone in covenant who has sway, come on, with God, who has influence with God. Come on. Oh, he understood the power of a word, glory to God, yes. from a power carrier. He unearthed somebody that knows you're carrying the word on the inside of you. Yes. Will begin to embrace what's in you to get what they need. That's right. But why are they not embracing us today? Some of us. Why are they not embracing the church mm. like they ought to be? Why are they not running to the church? But we're not trying to bring them in. We have the ministry of reconciliation. Yes. We're supposed to reach out. Yes. But I believe when this power is loose, yes. men are going to begin to run to the church yes. to get a word from a kingdom yes. area, yes. from a kingdom messenger yes. to say, speak the word only That's and right. my baby will be healed at home. Yes. You don't even have to come to my house. I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. Yes. What an acknowledgement. Everything is not tidy. Everything is not well. There's some sin in my house. Yeah. But if you speak the word, he knew that Jesus, if he wanted to do something, yes. he would do it. Yes. And the Bible says, Jesus says, I'm not saying this kind of faith. Not in all Israel. Israel. I've not seen this kind of faith mm -hmm. in all my people. Yes. This is unusual. Mm -hmm. This is unrivaled 
Yes. This is different. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. Any more descriptive words, adjectives. Unprecedented. This is unusual. Yes. This is not church usual. No. This is kingdom stuff. Yes. Come on. This is this is the kind of stuff that will affect whole cities. Yes. And bring them in glory to God. This is the kind of stuff that would cause men to walk out of their corporate offices. Yes. Like the great Charles Finney did. And go into the woods and seek the Lord. I want to know if it's real for myself. Yes. I just want to touch him. I, I want to. I want to experience what I see you all experiencing. I want the same power to inundate my life. And Jesus said, "I've not seen this kind of faith in all Israel." He yes. says, "Go your way now. Mm -hmm. Go your way now." Mm. Somebody's waiting on us to tell them to go your way. Yes. Your servant is healed right now. Yes. And the Bible said the self-same hour. That's right. The self-same hour. Mm -hmm. His servant revived. Yes. I don't know how far the journey was to meet Jesus. If it was a long distance, I don't know how long. If it was longer than an hour, he found his servant healed when he, when he got back. Yes. But the self-same hour, I believe the moment Jesus said it, baby. Yes. He was healed mm -hmm. the moment that word went out because the word of God is created. Yes. The word travels. Yes. We can send the word all yes. under the authority yes. of God's word and the auspices of Holy Spirit. Well, let me get back to it. Read that again. He says, if you believe. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, mm. he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Greater works, greater works. Somebody shout out loud, greater works. Greater works. Somebody shout at me, greater works. Greater I mean, works. Greater, greater, greater works. Greater than the, the first century church. Come on. Yes. Greater than what our fathers knew. I saw miracles in my upbringing in the church of God in Christ where I came up. But greater works, I can't live off that. Come on. Yes. I need more, more, more. Come on, somebody. Yes. When I begin to go on long fast, my sweetheart, I begin to tell somebody, ask, where is our son? Where is pastor or elder? I was an elder in the, that denomination. Where is he? I was seeking the Lord for more. One of my great teachers and mentors, he said, I know what's going on with you. He said, stay, that's the place where you're going to see more. I said, man, of God, there's more to God than what I'm seeing. There's more than what I see going on. Yes. Miracles should be happening more with, yes. more with with more frequency, with more. Amen. The more the gospel goes forth, the more we release Holy Spirit on the bus, yes. the more things should be made right. Yes. They evangelized the known world. Yes. They were turning the world right side up. Why is it no? Why is it not happening today? Why is it they begin to just uh, come on, lay hands on the sick and yes. they recovered? They had that temporary anointing before Holy Spirit came. Yes. But it was not permanent. Yes. Even he says, you know, I'm going to give you permission to lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. Yes. I'm going to give you permission to cast out devils. But it wasn't permanent until no. Holy Spirit came. Yes. They did that, but it was temporary. Yes. They could not function every day unless Jesus sent them on a mission yes. to go. You can have it. Come on. It's like it's on loan for a time. Yes. But when Holy Spirit came, it wasn't on loan. They had their own personal generator on yes. the inside of them, a power source that they could draw from to do the greater works yes. of Christ. Yes. Greater Greater works. Yes. yes, and you're talking about greater works in more than one sense. Greater meaning on a different dimension. Yes. yes. Also in number, more. More in number. Increased in number because no, it more. said that how Elisha did mm -hmm. greater works mm -hmm. or he increased, he doubled, he doubled. The, um, the miracles that Elijah did because he increased it. Jesus was limited in the amount of miracles he could do because he was only in ministry three and a half years. He had to go back to the Father. Yeah, the but we yes. have more than three and a half years. 
years mm -hmm. to do miracles greater, more increased in number. Can we do Lord the works if we would stay connected with the power source and we will allow mm -hmm. the spirit of the living God to uh, allow the power of God to flow through us? We can do greater works. Yes. We will do greater no, works. I will do greater works. Yes. Hallelujah. Do what Jesus did to do yes. greater Glory, uh, glory to God. Um, supernatural things we're going to do. But she said it doubled the number. Jesus had a time frame. Yes. A limited time that he was to be here. That's right. He said, to God, I got to go to my father. Yes. But I'm going to leave you in charge. Yes. Who has the church been left to? Mm. And what are they doing with it? Come on. Yes, and what are we doing with it? We've been, we've been left mm -hmm. with the charge to make it greater. To yes. make it better, come yes. on, to make it increase. Scripture yes. says, Paul talking to the church at Ephesus and talking about how each joint supplies. Yes. We are not to be disjointed, but no. joining. Everybody brings something yes. to the table. If Holy Spirit is in you and Holy Spirit, amen, is in me, we have more, a greater reward. We have more value for yes. our labor together. That's double it. portion. That's why Elisha asked for a double portion. He saw the miracle. Yes, he did. And how needed they were for those days of pagan society. Yes. He says, I pray that you give, give me, I want a double portion yes. of the spirit that's upon you, not for any selfish yes. uh, reason. There was no Simon the Sorcerer agenda no. uh, on, on, on Elisha's mind, but he knew the importance of getting people delivered. Yes. The importance of bringing people forth into the kingdom. I yes. got to slow down. I got to slow down just a little bit. Ah, glory to God. But I'm excited this morning yes. because Holy Spirit wants, wants, wants to be pulled on. Yes, Holy yes. Spirit wants to be used. He wants to be released. He wants us to allow him to do the assignment, his yes. work on the inside of us. So we're talking about empowerment. Amen. To live victoriously yes. every day. Amen. Amen. It was, it was unique. Holy Spirit coming to them on the day of Pentecost was unique, not just because it was the fulfillment of a long-standing promise. That was from uh, uh, Joel, the prophet, 2, 28 and 29. Get that for me. We read it before, but I'm not, come on, I'm not uh, uh, feeling a problem with reading it again because I'm trying to get a point over. The long-standing promise that was made, it, it didn't mean anything to people in that day, but to New Testament believers, only after the day of Pentecost, it meant something. There was no connection between what Joe's prophecy said. There was no connection to Old Testament believers of what John preached in John 3 and 11. There's one coming later or after me who's going to baptize you. But then on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and preached, yes. he said something, uh, Apostle Look it. He said that this is that. When you see me behaving in a certain way and I'm casting out devils, this is that. All right. When you hear me speaking in other tongues yes. as well, and, and somebody can interpret because it's the tongue of another nation, yes. Holy Spirit is doing that. This is that. Yes. When you hear me speaking in an unknown tongue, you need to know that I'm not speaking to you, but I'm speaking unto God. Yes. It's a direct line of communication mm -hmm. that God has given me by Holy Spirit yes. to speak to God That's right. and God to respond to me. Come on, somebody. Yes. And then to speak back to me and reveal to me. Hallelujah. We don't need to be in the dark about anything. Come Amen. on, people of God. We don't have to be, be not be not ignorant of Satan's devices. We got Holy Spirit to help us. Yes. All we gotta do is pray in the spirit. Yes. And go to him when we don't understand. Yes. Oh my God. Hey, run the two or three people. I need you to pray with me, and that's all right for the sake yes. of agreement. Yes. But but Holy Spirit is there. Yes. Use him. Amen. Allow him to pray. We don't know what to pray for. No. As we all. That's right. But the Spirit knows our infirmities. That's right. And he, the Spirit, makes intercession for us. Yes. With groanings that we don't understand. 
Yes. Groanings that get by us. Yes. We wouldn't have grown. We would have prayed selfishly. I just want it. I want the pain to stop. Mm -hmm. I just want the challenging uh, circumstances to be over with. Yes. I, 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 want, I, I want the 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 unknown to hurry up and be revealed to me. Yes. So that we can have peace around here. Me and my family can be blessed. Us four and no more. No. That's selfish. Yes. Holy Spirit gets the burden via God the Father. Come on. Amen. The Father wills it. I'm going to say that again. And the Son, Jesus, speaks it. Yes. And Holy Spirit executes it. Yes. He carries it out. That's right. He brings it forth. Yes. He, mm, he births it. Come on. He, the <laughs> birth man, oh, brings it forth. Somebody's yes. in birth and mold right now. There's been something you've been believing, God. Mm -hmm. Healing of a, of a loved one. Healing of a spouse. Uh, salvation of your whole house. I dare you to get in. Uh, mm, get in privacy. Get and build that altar. And let Holy Spirit begin to birth through you. There are mothers of the past. There are women of the past who birthed their husband's salvation. That's right. When they weren't thinking about being saved. Yes. There are uh, uh, husbands who birthed the wife's salvation. Yes. There are parents who birthed, glory to God, the salvation of their whole households. We can get in birth. And birth this nation to be a nation under God. Yes. Rather than stand back and complain about the politics of the day. Yes. We just need the Holy Spirit is the agency. Yes. We have the agent to make this world change. That's right. For the better. But 228, the promise is being fulfilled. This is that. Yes. Somebody say this is that. This is that. That was spoken by the prophet Joe. In the last days, I'm going to pour out some Jesus. Told them the Holy Spirit was going to come to them. And Holy Spirit being poured out is the new wine. Yes. It's like wine being poured out. Fresh oil, fresh wine is revealed and released in this place. Yes. He is the new wine yes. of the Spirit set to indwell. Yes. In dwell, yes, to abide and to take up residence. Let me define that word residence. It's the abode, mm -hmm. it's where someone lives. Yes, habitates. Habitation is not about temporary. Come on, not temporary. they had a temporary fix, they had a temporary anointing, they had a temporary uh, power that was operative only when Jesus afforded it to them. Yes. But it was not permanent. They couldn't function in all areas. No. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching this word today. Uh, residence has reference to living inside. Yes. Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Yes. To dwell inside of us. Yes. Hallelujah. To take up residence, amen, as believers. And it comes to do what we've already taught this, but I'm giving it in a capsule. What else did he come to do besides live, abide, and hang out with us? Teach us. Teach us. Come on, you are so, you, you're not even looking at me. <laughs> you're not even looking at well, me. Well, the Holy Spirit teach. is here to me. <laughs> He's here to teach. teach. Glory, glory to God. Oh, J.J., I see you. Glory to God. I know your, I know your new name now. Come <laughs> on. Uh, let's agree. He comes to teach. Yes. Teach what? All things. All things. And bring all things to our remembrance. He touches our memory to remember what, what he has spoken to us. Yes. Not just any old thing, but what he's spoken to us. He will also, as Holy Spirit, bring us a word called rhema. Yes. What is a rhema, sweetheart? Uh, a rhema is a right now word. It's a right now word. Sometimes yes. you need a right now word. That's right. It comes through the auspices 
of Holy Spirit. You're connected to the Father. That's why when we need a right now word, yes. we walk around this house praying in tongues. That's right. Because we need God to show us something. Yes. Show us where something is. Yes. Show us what's our next move. Yes. Show us if we're to go to a place where we have been That's invited right. or if we're not to go. That's if right. we're to go a certain highway yes. or we are to avoid a certain highway. Yes. All of that's important to us in this house. So yes. Come on. If I canceled trips when I prayed in this, I felt uneasy about it. And I prayed in the spirit and Holy Spirit would say, you're not to go there. Yes. And later I would find the reason why I shouldn't go there. Yes. Uh, I knew a great, uh, a, a, a tremendous man of God who was a tremendous man of God and uh, connected to our family. He just was praying one day before getting ready the next day, glory to God, to leave on the trip. And he felt a little uneasy. The next day he was to leave. He began to pray that morning and Holy Spirit told him, he says, don't go and get on that plane. He said, cancel the trip, cancel the preaching engagement. Don't get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And later on in the evening, the late night, he found out the plane that he was to ride crashed. Mm -hmm. And most of the people died on that plane, in that plane wow. crash. There were not many survivors, and Holy Spirit had warned him yes. not to go there. Yes. So when we need Holy Spirit to reveal something, we engage it. So he comes to teach, bring things to our remembrance. He comes to guide. Lead us and he guide comes us. to lead. Yes. He comes to teach us. And God is what? God is what? In all In truth. All, truth. all right. truth will be known to us when we allow Holy Spirit to do the ministry. And he's come to draw all of humanity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah That's to it. God. Jesus came to redeem humanity. Yes. Holy Spirit has come to draw humanity back to God. Yes. And he will bring the attention to Jesus. That's right. By reminding us of what Jesus said. Yes. Glory to God. Did we finish 228? Um, we haven't read it. Okay, 228, read, I quoted it. Uh, he says, in the last days. And it, uh, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh mm -hmm. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. All right, so how do we prophesy? By Holy Spirit. By his spirit. How do we prophesy? By Holy Spirit. By Holy Spirit. It's not by anything that we've known before. No. It's not by, come on, God will give us a word of knowledge. Sure. A word of discerning. Yes. But we prophesy by the spirit. By yes. faith. That yes. the spirit, just like we believed, when we asked for the baptism of Holy Spirit, yes. he would give the utterance or the speech. He would form the words for us to speak in our English. Come yes. on. Uh, not in English, but speak in the spirit. Yes. We didn't know what to say. Holy no. Spirit forms. We don't know what language we're speaking in. No. Whether it's unknown, but we have to have the faith to believe that Holy Spirit is giving the utterance. Yes. So he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh because he is the new wine. Yes. The Holy Spirit represents the outpouring of the new wine on Pentecost yes. to dwell in us and to live in us. He leads us. Yes. He teaches us all yes. things. He reveals. He, that's what I was going to say. Reveals. He reveals the he, mind of the Father. No, he reveals, you know, notes, the Father in Jesus to us. Yes, he, he does. He reveals who Jesus is. Yes. He reveals the mind, who has known the mind of Christ. Yes. First Corinthians 14 says that, who has known the mind of Christ, but we have the mind of Christ. Yes. How do we have his mind? Because Holy Spirit reveals what he is thinking. Yes. And when the mind of Christ revealed, out of the abundance of the heart, show me the heart. The heart. Out, out of the abundance, wait a minute, she's pointing to her head. Out of the abundance of the heart, you need to explain yourself. Come on. So in the natural, the heart is here. Yes. But in the spirit, the heart is here. Right. Because the word tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is he. So thoughts come out of the 
heart mm -hmm. and thoughts are connected to the mind. Yes. And so when we say we're out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. It uh, generates here first and then it comes out here. Out here. So then everything that's done is, is, is a, a seed. Yes. A concept. The enemy plants evil come up in our thoughts. Yes. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's what you're thinking, what's in there that's been planted, it will come out of the mouth. Oh, yes, it will. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of life. Yes. The borders of the boundaries of life. That's right. From your mind. You can set boundaries yes. and you can break bonder, boundaries. That's right. With your thinking. That's yes. why we have to transition from the thinking of the old man. Yes. And come into the thinking of the new man. Yes. The old. He says, when uh, any man be in Christ, yes. he is a new creation, yes. creature. Yes. Old things are bad, including old thinking. Yes. All things are passed away. And behold, watch this. Look at this. All things have become new. Yes. And that's why we subject ourselves yes. uh, to the will of the Father and Holy Spirit will reveal the mind of the Father. Yes. And if we see certain type of behaviors, there's no way that that person can be operating on the Holy Spirit. That's no. right. We that's see right. certain things, you're thinking that way. That's not the way Holy Spirit, that's not the mind of the Father. No. Father didn't give that to you. Yes, right. Father didn't lead you to do that. No. Because he leads us in all truth. truth. Holy Spirit leads us in all truth. Right. And when truth is presented to us, what should be our reaction to the truth? We should yield to it. Yes. Abide by it. Yes. And then we're free. Yes. It doesn't put us in bondage. No. If truth is not there, you're already in bondage. Yes. Come on. Conviction is the word. Holy Spirit brings conviction as well. Yes, he not does. condemnation. Not condemnation. Condemnation is of the devil. Yes, because it accuses. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the That's brother. right. And he it even sets forth penalty and judgment for you, yes. or sentences you, and brings guilt to you. But Holy Spirit brings an awareness of sin's presence yes. in your life. Yes. So if you found Holy Spirit will do this. See, see, see. Somebody said, well, I'm touchable now that I have Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm invincible now. No. The great thing about you saying that, you're not invincible if you don't listen to Holy Spirit. That's right. Holy Spirit is there. He's checks and balances. Yes. He will let you know if something is not right. He'll bring an awareness, yes. and then he will encourage you That's to right. keep striving to be like Jesus. That's right. To begin to take on Jesus' heart. Yes. Jesus is mine. Yes. Jesus is ways. And then you're walking and talking like him. But condemnation will discourage you. Yes. Make you feel guilty. Yes. And make you want to quit. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's right. Um, just like when you talk about condemnation, um, to the point where you're guilty, where there is no coming back. Yeah. Um, condemnation, but um conviction is to uh, make guilty with a sense of repairing to cause you to come back. And my notes leads to repentance. Yes. yes. And so that, that's the difference. Satan don't want you to go back to God. He wants to constantly continue to say, you did this, you did this, you did this. You're no good. Uh, lead to worthlessness. But God is like, yes, you did this. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you would just turn, if you would just turn. turn. It's, like, yes. it's like conviction. It's like uh, a caring mother. Or a caring father, mm -hmm. when the when the child makes a mistake, you know he, he never stops loving. That's right. It's like take him by the hand. Come on, baby, let's come on. This is the way we're gonna go now. We're gonna overcome this. Yes. We're gonna get over this. That's right. Conviction by Holy Spirit leads us. Yes. You know, towards repentance. Yes. So that we can get up and be, be stronger and overcome that. That's right. So it leads us yes. not to quit, not to give it up, not to a point of no return. That's right. But it leads us to a place of going in the right path. That's exactly right. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. It inspired you to keep 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 striving, keep shining, amen, to, to go forth in the things of God. And that's why I want to, let me just with that, since that came up, First John, uh, what do you got? You holding what? I, nothing, just um, okay. Acts 1 and 8. First John mm, 2 and 1 and 2. Conviction, conviction. 
Holy Spirit in all of these things. I'm believing God that the church of the living God this year is going to make such a statement. Yes. In the world. Yes. Somebody said, where's the church during the pandemic? Church has been a weak church. Hey, we've gone through this. But I believe we're coming out gold. Yes. I believe we're coming out, and this was a shaking thing. Yes. To get us in place. Yes. Come on, to realign. Yes. With purpose. And to understand that, as I was saying, we, we call to do greater works. That means not church usual. That's right. Church unusual. Yes. Come on. A greater than church is here. Yes. A greater than Solomon is here. That's right. Sometimes we're trying to hold on to a yesterday experience. Come on now. And the Lord says, no, I'm, I groom you for the greater. Yes. Come on, Ecclesia. Come oh. on, church. Come on, church of the New Testament. Come yes. on. We're to write. That were what, 28 chapters in Acts, right? 28? 28? I believe it's 28. God wants us to write the 29th. Come on. Yes. It's time for us. Come on. Let's to add it. to the yes. history. We're to be the, the new. Ah. Woo. We're to be the yeah. 29th chapter yes. in this millennium, in this dispensation, operating in kingdom authority. The kingdom of God uh, has since from the days of John the Baptist. Yes. Has suffered a lot for violence. But and and the violent take it by force. Yes. The violent, we're taking the kingdom. We're operating in the kingdom. Yes. We're establishing the kingdom where it is not. The yes. kingdom is uh, coming and not yet. Oh, it's a paradox. It is coming and it is here. Jesus told the woman at the well, hallelujah. He said, the hour cometh and now is. Yes. When he talks about something coming, it's already operating. Yes. Come on. Uh, the, the, maybe the remnants or the shades of it, somewhere, pockets of it. You may not see it where you are. It may not be operating in your church, yes. but somewhere, somebody is operating in kingdom power. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kingdom authority. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Um, Conviction. Yes. I want to show you something that I found as to how Holy Spirit works. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to shout us, make us dance, make us quicken. Matter of fact, watch it. <laughs> Matter of fact, he quickens us from dead works to living works. Yeah, that's right. That's what the real meaning here yes. is. If Holy Spirit that dwells in your mortal. Come on now. He will quicken you yes. by his spirit that dwells in you. Yes. He's living. Jesus said. Yes. St. John 6, 63. The words that I speak. Yes. They are spirit. Yes. And they are life. Yes. Gives meaning to spirit and life. The words that's going to come out of you, <laughs> you never spoke before. The words that's going to come out of you are going to have significance and meaning. Uh, it's going to change somebody's life and environment. Yes. It's going to change your whole household. The words that people have identified you and many times will identify you by your conversation pieces. Oh, yes, Lord. But when Holy Spirit is there, you talk like the one who baptized you. You talk from a heavenly perspective. Mm -hmm. Come on, you talk the way Jesus would talk when he was in the earth. Your words are leading to the connectivity with him. Yes. Listen at this that is said in the epistle of John 1, 2, 1, 2. You said John 1, 2, 1, 2? John 2. Okay. John 2. John chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. All right. Thank My you. little children, these things write I unto mm -hmm. you that ye sin not. And if ye, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Mm -hmm. And he is the propitiation for our sins. All right. That, I'm just talking about there. We have, if we sin, yes. we have what? It says that we have an advocate. I want to key in on that word, advocate. And in your footnote, there may be another great definition there. But this is something I found. Advocate, that means someone who speaks on your behalf. 
If you should say <laughs> someone, what you got? Shall speak on your behalf. It says verse um, definition says intercessor, but the second uh, has Greek parakletos. There it is. I found that word parakletos is used four different times mm. when we look in St. John's Gospel. That's talking right. about what Holy Spirit is to us, comforter. He is a comforter, paraclete, paracletos, one called alongside of us to help us. Yes. It didn't say, I mean, how he would comfort us, but this word uses paraclete for advocate. Yes. Clearly he says, he will, Holy Spirit, also like Jesus, because Holy Spirit is God inside of us as well. Come Amen. on. He's Amen. God, the Holy Ghost. That's God, right. the Holy Spirit. That's right. He takes what Jesus says and gives us his words. Yes. So in a sense, he speaks as an advocate just like Jesus. Yes. Power cletus, he cletus, he speaks for us. Yes. When sin is present, yes. he will, come on, let us know you don't have to stay there. There is provision made for you to come out of this, come out, let go, get back on track, and win again. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I gotta finish, sweetheart. I got more word than I have time, but I'm going for the finish. So he's pouring out his spirit. Holy Spirit is in us. He's here. Uh, First Corinthians. Uh, I'm, you don't have to go. The First Corinthians chapter twelve to fourteen. Paul tells us that Holy Spirit empowers us. We said. In St. John, we found out through uh, chapter 14, 15, and 16, he's a comforter. Yes. He's a teacher. Yes. He's a guide. Yes. Come on. A he, he's a revealer. Yes. Amen. All those things that he says. But now, 1 Corinthians, you can go study. We've been touching these, yes. but we don't want to go back and read them. Uh, chapter 14, Paul told us that Holy Spirit empowers or gives the ability of God yes. to perform ministry, to do ministry. To do the works right. of Christ. Amen. He is the power in us. Amen. Amen. That empowers us. I'm going to use that word empowerment in a different way in a few minutes. Amen. He says that he empowers us. Paul taught us. He gives us the ability. He even gives us gifts mm. to edify or build up the church. The church needs to be built up. Yes. If the gifts are not flowing, now you need to hear me here. A church where the gifts or flowing is a church full of life. Yes. It's a church that has the ability for miracles to be wrought and worked. Amen. It's a church that will have a prophetic step on it. Yes. Because the gifts, what are the gifts of the spirit? Amen. There's one of the gifts of the spirit is prophecy. Yes. Gift speaking in tongue, yes. interpretation of tongues. For to uh, one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Yes, to wisdom. It. That we how many know we need wisdom in the church? Yes. Um, King Solomon did not ask God for wealth and riches. Yes. God just rewarded him with that. Yes. Because of his faithfulness, but he asked him for wisdom mm -hmm. to lead in God's church. Yes. To be a leader in anything. Yes. But in particular, in God's church. Yes. We need the wisdom of God applied. Yes. We need the wisdom to know what to do. Yes. Help me, sweetheart. How to do. Yes. Where and to do. When, what, where? When to do. When. Yes. And where to do. That's right. Now, what would we say where? Uh, God shut up the brook children. That's it. Where Elijah was there and God was feeding him supernaturally. Yes. But then God deliberately dried up the brook. Yes. Why? Well, I, I believe he wanted to keep his, his, his prophet on the cutting edge. Yes. Don't you get too comfortable right here. Uh -huh. We're going to get so comfortable. And, and, and what, what, what comfortability has the tendency to do, listen, listen, is to make us get into a place where we start 
limiting God. Yes. We put the limits. Oh, that God can't do no better than this because we enjoying that place. Yes. Oh, I get three fresh meals. Come on. Well, two fresh meals. He was getting two. Yes. Uh, in the morning and the evening. That's two, right. two fresh meals. I'm getting meat to the full. Yes. Every day. Two fish sandwiches a day. Two fish sandwiches a day. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm right here by the brook and it's always refreshing. Yes. There's a cool breeze. I've got clear water, fresh water to drink. Uncontaminated water, and God can't do no better than this. Mm. But God deliberately dried up the brook yes, he did. to keep this man on edge. Yes. In other words, he's got to stay in the face of God. Yes. He's got to stay before the presence of God. Yes. You've got to stay on the cutting edge to keep to keep moving in advancing from faith to faith and from glory to glory, That's it. not getting settled in mm -hmm. in tradition. That's it. Well, I wasn't in, I'm not in tradition. You know what? We can make tradition out of anything. Sure we can. You can, I've seen people come out of so-called tradition and start building a, a, a tradition around what you're doing that's supposed, supposed to be new. Yeah. Because you settled there. Yes. You stop looking for God to, to bring forth new revelation. Yes. He's new wine. Yes. And new wine keeps getting better. Yes. Oh, my, my. It empowers us. He gives us gifts to build up the church. And if the gifts are not flowing, church is not being built up. That's right. The church, the body of believers. Come on. Yes. We're not glorifying a building. That's right. We're not to glorify a denomination. Amen. But we're to glorify God. And as believers, when the gifts are flowing, Holy Spirit gives these gifts. That's right. To one is given wisdom. To one is given what? The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. To one to another is given what? Faith. Faith. Come on. We need faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Holy Spirit is the giver of all of these gifts. Yes. Faith to believe for all things, not just some things. Yes. Amen. Come on, sweetheart. I got to close. Working of miracles. Mm -hmm. um, gifts of healing. Yes. Prophecy. Oh, yes. Discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, diverse kinds of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Yes. So, Holy Spirit gives us gifts to edify the church. Nine gifts. Nine gifts. Like amen. nine fruits. Yes, amen. <laughs> to do what Jesus did. Yes. So we can do what Jesus did. Not only that, he does, um, he heals, mm -hmm. he reveals. Yes. Amen. Uh, we cannot do without him. That's right. Jesus would say on one occasion in St. John, I believe it's 15, 5, 5, 15, uh, without me, you can do nothing, just That's for the it. sake of clarity. Amen. In agreement. Without me, you can do nothing. That's right. 515. Without me. Oh, I went to okay. the scripture. Okay. Without me, you can do nothing. So without Holy Spirit, so he empowers us to do. We already said what Jesus did. Yes. Now, power. Why was so important? The two deposits at Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Power in tongues. Yes. We're dealing with power. And I'm going to wrap around this and use this to close out with. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, we just said a little while ago, as you were listening, he gives them this teaching and give them this response. Yes. You know, it's not for you to know. That's right. The times and the seasons that the Father has within his power. That's right. Doesn't that follow that? Yes, it does. I verse need to seven. Read verse verse six and seven. Uh, verse six. When they uh, therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, "Lord, wilt thou also? Excuse me, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom mm -hmm. to Israel?" And he said unto them, "It is not for you to know mm -hmm. the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power." Ooh. But stop, stop now. So, is it time to restore the kingdom? No. Are you gonna are you gonna restore the kingdom back to Israel now? It's not for you to know that. I can tell you that. It's not for you to know now. Yes. But you what you need to be concerned with, you're gonna receive power. Holy Ghost is gonna be the revealer in yes. you. Yes. He's gonna reveal anybody getting this? Yes. He's gonna reveal times. Mm -hmm. Seasons. Yes. Come on. Is it time for me to go back to school, to college, and get that second degree? 
Holy Spirit will reveal yea or nay to you. Yes. Is it time for the church to be operating in this vein? No, it, he revealed, come on. Yes. Uh, it, he revealed that I moved from that, come on. Mm -hmm. That's tradition. It's making my word of none effect. It's time for the church to really be a worshiping church. Yes. I found in my notes a message I taught on the glory uh, years ago, and Holy Spirit says, I want you to bring that back to your worshiping teachings. He says, and I wrote in there, I said, there's coming a day. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he's been confirming it through the mouths and voices of men who've been speaking. Friends of mine said, Apostle, I want you to come. And just because God told me, the apostle friend of mine told me just last week, he said, I need you to come, man. Because the other day the Lord says, our churches don't worship enough. We don't, well, he said that the revival is going to come. Yes, my prayer. He said, we're praying with you all. And I know you already, but you've said it to us many times when you came here. It's going to be a revival of worship and praise. He said, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I got to get it done. I got to begin to initiate getting more praise. And in that teaching, in my notes, they so old, sweet, the, 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 the ink is almost faded. Mm. And, it, and I said, I was teaching somewhere in, in, in the outpouring, in the end times, we as church, the body of Christ, will worship more. Yes. And praise less. Yes. Praise, come on. Invites him, praise, come on, gets us, you know, in a certain mood to talk about him. We, but worship brings him down here. Yes. Praise and worship will bring him down. Worship gets us into a place of intimacy yes. where there's a knowing where he begins to reveal his heart. Yes. Because worship gets us into that singular one-on-one -on -one relationship where it's heart-to-heart -heart worship yes. Yes. is Jesus in me and nobody else in the equation. Yes. Everything else is tuned out. Yes. We worship more because that's where the power of God is going to be released. That's when the revival is going to come. So you shall receive power yes. after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what's going to happen? Then you're going to go forth. You're going to be empowered, yes. enabled. Let me say this to you. Jesus did not, and we'll read that tweet. Jesus did not mm -hmm. go on without knowing he needed Holy Spirit. That's right. Operating in him. Holy Spirit, give up supernatural. Holy Spirit also is the developer of godly character. Yes. On the inside of us. Yes. We as believers should have impeccable character. Yes. Oh, you're getting quiet on the church. And it's okay if we it's fail okay. the test. It's okay. All we have to do is repent. And then get back in that place with the Lord and yes. let him um, build us up in that area. We're, mm -hmm. we're, none of us are perfect, but that's no excuse not to pursue perfection. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And call on the Holy Spirit and let him do his work. That's right. So here we are in my clothes. Uh, after Holy Spirit came, this is what he's telling the disciples. After it comes, then you shall be, first of all, what? But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, that's empowerment to do what I did. Mm -hmm. The first thing is you're going to be a witness. No, Holy Spirit doesn't call everybody to be an apostle. He's not saying that here. Yes. He's not saying the first thing you're going to be is a prophet. No. You know, when Holy Spirit comes, he says sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Yes. But it's nothing like sin. I, the revival that came to our church years ago, children speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. prophesies, prophesying and prophesies to other people, prophesying, amen, before God. And, you know, um, seeing visions, having visions and telling about them. And then the first ministry is reconciliation, yes. which is to witness concern. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, he tells men, he draws men to Jesus. That's right. He talks about Jesus. That's right. What does Holy Spirit talk about? Jesus. Jesus. He talks about, I heard one saint talking to another saint, saint in Daniel's uh, writings. Holy Spirit 
talks about Jesus. Yes. He speaks of Jesus. Yes. He doesn't speak of himself. He does not. Jesus said, I don't, he will not even speak of himself, but he will speak of mine. Yes. And give it to you, show you what the Father has for you. Before yes. he tells them, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has in his power. But Holy Spirit is going to do that. Holy Spirit is going to bring his and tell you and give you timing, give you instructions, give you a revelations, talk about seasons that the Father has because we know the mind of Christ now yes. that Holy Spirit has been given yes. as a gift to the believer. Yes. Hallelujah. So they start witnessing. He says, in Ju Judea, Samaria, in Jerusalem rather. Yes. Judea, Samaria, and the utmost parts of the earth. And after this, sweetheart, we never see, we never read mm -hmm. where they prayed for power. No. They had been baptized yes. with the power. It's an oxymoron mm -hmm. to me to hear people who have been baptized with the Holy Spirit yes. and pray for power. Yes. Not true. They, they, they asked the Father to show up and heal. Yes. But the healing was done through them. That's right. Because they have Holy Spirit. Yes. He didn't have to come down. Jesus didn't have to come back and revisit. No. Come on. He didn't have to come back and say, I got to dwell with you guys again because you don't have it. You didn't get it. No. They had Holy Spirit who represented him. Yes. So they never prayed for the power. Oh, God, send us the power. Oh, God, we need your power now. No, no, no. You have the power. Already. Brother, man, sister, girl, already. And greater works you will do than Jesus. He said that I did because yes. I'm gone. But I'm sending what I had, yes. what was operating in me, yes. is going to be in you. But what happened? They didn't, they didn't pray for the power. But what we see was a list. All right. We see a catalog of powerful manifestations yes. of them operating. They knew the power was resident. Yes. They knew the power was abiding. That's right. They knew the power was living, dwelling, and 4 and 12 of Hebrew, active, quick, yes. and powerful. It was he was active in them within them. Amen. That's a difference between sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Um if Jesus would have given them, remember what he said, I give you the keys. Yes. Did you see of the kingdom? Yes. Mm -hmm. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Yes. He didn't say to the kingdom. No. All right. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. If I give you, you have keys to this house. Yes. I do. Right. And I do too, right? That's right. So I gave you a set of keys. Yes. So if I give you the keys of the kingdom, you have access to every room in the house. Okay. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's called a master key. Mm -hmm. Some people design where the master key will open up every door and lock every door inside that house. Okay. So I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom so you will have access. Somebody say access. Access. To everything in the house, everything in the kingdom, everything that the Father has to give everything that you need to affect the earth positively in God's favor. Yes. Hallelujah. He says, he says, I'm giving you keys and he gave them a key. So it would be a different thing for me to say, well, you know, I'm just going to give you, I'm not going to give you the master key, but um, uh, I'm going to give you uh, one key. Well, I'll give you a different key that will just only open the front door. It's not going to be master. But if the other rooms in the house uh, are locked, you can get in there. Yeah. If I tell you that I'm going to, I want you to see this analogy. If I tell you I'm going to uh, let you borrow my car or loan you my car, that every now and then, occasionally, you can use it. But if I give you the keys to my car mm -hmm. and say you can use it at any time, that's different. Mm -hmm. When he gave us Holy Spirit, that means no more loan, no more uh, temporary anointing, mm -hmm. no more temporary power, but residence, permanent residence in you until the rapture yes. or until you leave this earth. 
Yes. And you can do the works. Now, Jesus, let me go and prove what Jesus did. All right. Jesus had to have. All right. Matthew 10, we saw what Jesus gave. Don't go there, sweet. Yet, yeah, I don't want that yet. 10, 17 and 19, he gave them temporary power. Mm -hmm. Told them, he said, you go, preach. He says, uh, you're the sick. Cast out devils. Yes. Come on. In my name. Raise the dead. He said, you've been raised this before all the ghost stuff. Even raise the dead, right? Oh, yes. Temporarily. You can't do it permanently. You can't function. And then he says, uh, not only that, work miracles. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Jesus shows why he needed Holy Spirit, okay? Acts 10.38, I'm going to read that. Okay. I'm going to help you. Matthew 3 and 11. Now, here's the promise. Peter stood up and said on that day, this is that, that was spoken up by the prophet Joel. Now Joel's name means something. Yes. Some people probably hadn't read, some people that had read thought it was never coming. But now he's here right now. What yes. you need is waiting at the table. He's here right now. Just ask him. Yes. If you give Holy Spirit. All right. Oh, Acts 10, 38. 36, now, 36 up to 38. Come on. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Mm -hmm. That word, I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So he was empowered by Holy Spirit to go healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. Bringing forth the kingdom you teach about. Yes. When demons are cast out, we know the kingdom has come. That's right. But he ain't coming without Holy Spirit. That's right. Come on now. Amen. All right. So let's go to Matthew uh, 3 and 11. 12 and 13, let's see something. And I don't think we ever got an answer as to when Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, we had to cut it off because we had to go forward. We had to go forward, we yes. Forward. So oh, yeah. you, you gave the answer. You still have a chance to put it up there. Amen. Well, you gave the answer. Did I give it? Yes, you did. All right. Maybe I didn't realize I was giving it, but I'm going to see it right here. Matthew 3, 11 and um, uh, 13 through 13, maybe it goes to 16, and then 16 and 17. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose uh, shoes I am not worthy to bear. Mm -hmm. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff yeah. with unquenchable fire. Hallelujah. Uh, 13. Then coming Jesus from the from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Skip down. Mm -hmm. Skip down to uh, 16. 16 and 17. That's what I want. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the water, mm -hmm. excuse me, the heavens were open Heaven opened. unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending Lord. like a dove came like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so here is when Jesus is baptized in the Holy Spirit John saw him and says uh, you know behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world we see that in John's writing yes. you know we're not going to go to it but he says I have need he said baptize me John John said no 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 be greater than I am. I have need to be baptized of you. And Jesus would say, mm -hmm. suffer it to be so. For I must fulfill all righteousness. Right. I must do this. Yes. I must fulfill this because others yes. will need to do the same thing that I did. Yes. Which is why he sent them to the upper room to do the same thing because to minister, you need Holy Spirit. Yes. If you're ministering in any kind of way, yes. you need Holy Spirit yes. to be successful. And I don't really want to say successful to do what Jesus did. Yes. To operate within, come on, the realm of the scriptures. Yes. To do it and know that people are being delivered. You can't do it without Holy Spirit. That's right. Come on. Unless there's a, the temporary 
grace, yes. if you will, the temporary anointing, what, that was done when Jesus was here. Yes. Not, not any longer necessary. Yes. Because Holy Spirit is the replacement for that. Yes. All right. All right. He was baptized then. And we're going to see in the close. Let's go now to St. Luke. Amen. Chapter 4. So he's anointed at John's baptism. Then he's driven into mm. the wilderness. That's right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'd, right. Like, I'd like to do... Um, a quiz to ask everybody that's called, especially to five four ministry. Did you go through something? Or did you go through a test before you actually started? Mm. Did you have to go to any kind of wilderness? Did you have to pay some dues? Did you have to um, come on? Uh, Holy Spirit drove him. He was led up, up into the wilderness. Yes, because to be tempted of the devil. Jesus had to be tested. Yes. And approved. Yes. To go even further. Amen. That's right. Amen. amen. So then he does that. Now, let's close out with this. Uh, so Jesus submitted himself to John's baptism. Why yes. did he do it? Because Holy Spirit, he needed Holy Spirit to function in the earth to do his assignment. He was not equipped to move forward. Jesus, no. Yes. 1038, God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. Yes. To go about healing the sick. Come on. And healing all of those that were pressing the devil. He could, he was not equipped to move forward without Holy Spirit's anointing and empowerment. Mm -hmm. Giving him the ability. Doing this power is the power to replicate. Yes. To do over what's been done. That's right. Uh, Paul talked about it to the Corinthian church. To be able to perform and duplicate replicate mm -hmm. for the disciples to do what Jesus did. They need the Holy Spirit to replicate and do even greater. That's right. Okay. So then the anointing to empower Jesus was needed Holy Spirit. So he instructed the disciples to do the same. Now we see him in the tabernacle when he's reading the scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. What verse is that? And we're close with 14. 18. Okay. He says, as he reads the scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach mm. the gospel to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to mm. the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable mm. year of the Lord. All of those ministries. Mm -hmm. He's upon me now. Yes. And he's anointed me now. Yes. He's anointed me upon. He's anointed me within. Mm -hmm. He has clothed me upon put clothes, a power outfit, a suit of power upon me. Mm -hmm. Not just temporary, but a suit of power to do all of these things. To yes. preach to, to the poor, the brokenhearted, to bring, uh, come on, uh, sight to the blind, yes. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, yes. to set the captives free. Yes. This is what we ought to be doing in church today. Come on. And if it's not happening, we need to begin to re-examine ourselves. Yes. We need to go to the wilderness. We need to go, yeah, and we need to go back to the altar. Yes. And if we have Holy Spirit, we just need to obey and allow him to work in us. That's right. And he has not given us the spirit of fear. So what if you lay your hands on somebody and they say they didn't get well? Go lay hands on somebody else. Hey, Jesus didn't heal, um, he didn't heal those who were in his hometown because they didn't have the faith. They, they didn't even acknowledge him mm -hmm. as being um, Jesus the Messiah. Yes. So they couldn't even receive from him. So it may be that there was a lack of faith on the other person's part, but don't let that stop you from offering to lay hands and to Come pray on, for sweet, them. Sweet, that is so true. Paul uh, on the island of Miletus and Miletus, Miletus, you know, um, did everybody you know, he said, I left some in Miletus sick. Mm. Um, I left, was at Trophimus in Miletus. I left him sick. Mm -hmm. He didn't get well. Come on, somebody. Uh, I prayed for people who got who got healed, yes. but I prayed for some who didn't get healed. But do you think I stopped believing in healing? You think no. I stopped? Come on, Holy Spirit in me is the healer. That's I right. am the vessel. Come on, and That's it. I am the conduit that He flows through. Sweet, I have in ministry years ago as a young pastor. 
prayed for a lady, the pus was not there, there was no heartbeat. I had nurses in my church mm -hmm. and they checked and this is nothing there, Pastor. I kept praying, kept praying, kept praying. She was out, limp, lame, come on. It, it, the, the look of death was upon her mm -hmm. and we prayed until a pus came up. Yes. Felt the heartbeat. And she began to lift the hand. Oh my God. Pray for another person at my church who who who, who passed away. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. I still believe that I have the power in me to heal the sick, to bring the healing, to, to raise the dead. That's right. Glory to God. We just gotta keep doing it, people of God. Yes. And believe God. So now he says this here. Now look at the 14th verse. The 14th verse. Hallelujah. Uh, of uh, that same Luke 4. Yes. It says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit <laughs> into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region around about. Read down to about the 18th, 19th verse. So that I want to show you here how he was baptized mm -hmm. in John's baptism. Yes. He goes to the wilderness to be tested. He, yes. Come on, he had victory. In his daily life. Yes. Because of the Holy Spirit over the temptations yes. every day. And now what's happening now? He's going out. He's returned with the scripture. Another translation said he went out. Yes. In the, power. in the power of the spirit. That's right. You shouldn't go out. You shouldn't be sent out unless you have the power of the spirit. That's right. He goes out in the power of the spirit. He became famous. And we see examples of the power. Read down to the 21st verse. And that's where we're going to stop. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Yes. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Okay, uh, we, we did that. So get by where he says, and to proclaim uh, the day of the Lord, that this day. And that's what verse 18, 19, 20. Go to 19 through 21. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and mm. sat down and the eyes of all of them mm. that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day. And we read on in that chapter. We don't have to go there. Yes. Where demon spirits mm. coming out of people crying with loud voices. That's right. Healing all forms of sickness and disease. Yes. Leprosy and all yes. of that. He was doing that in that chapter because he went out. That's right. In the power of the Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to live. Yes. Take a permanent residence. They never lost Holy Spirit. That's it. After they were baptized, the disciples. Guess what? And they never prayed for the power. No. They never prayed because the power was on the inside of them. I pray now that you would ask him if you don't have him in your life to inundate you, to baptize you. Yes. He will give it if you just ask. Holy Spirit, God asks that you would baptize me. Yes. Look at your Holy Spirit right now. It is Holy your promise. God. And then look at the answers of Holy Spirit, I'm receiving. Holy Spirit, I'm receiving. You right now. You right now. I'm receiving. I'm receiving. God, say, God, I'm receiving. God, I'm receiving. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. And he's going to use your tongue. He's going to bring utterance down inside you. A bubbling of his utterance speech is being formed. Yes. Come on. You, you just, and, and right now, say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That I'm being filled right now. That I'm being filled right With now. With Holy Spirit. With Holy Spirit. Just spend some time just now begin to just worship him just begin to just wait for him and he waiting on you but as the utterance comes he's going to act on your lips on your tongue these are the organs that we speak with he will give the utterance but you will put the sound to it yes. there's a sound that came as of a rushing mighty wind now it was a sound mm -hmm. the sound didn't baptize him mm -hmm. come on no. uh -uh. amen and the, the the appearance of as a symbol these were symbols yes. of Split tongues appeared on each one of them over their on their heads. Mm -hmm. The tongues, split tongues didn't fill them, but Holy yes. Spirit Himself yes. baptized them. That's right. Came into them because they were expecting him. Yes. Jesus says, Hallelujah. You're gonna be in due. Thank you for this time. 
Thank you for this time. If there's anybody that's not saved, I'm going to pray that prayer. Just lift your hands right where you are, in your living room, whatever part of your home, you may be in your car, wherever you are. The day is the day of salvation. Paul says to Corinth, now is the accepted time. Yes. This is the day of God's favor. Yes. Say, Lord. Lord. I'm coming to you now. I'm coming to you now. As a sinner. As a sinner. But I changed my mind. But I changed my mind. God, I turned. God, I turned. From my sinful ways. From my sinful ways. And I accept Jesus. And I accept Jesus. As my Savior. As my Savior. And Lord of my life. And Lord of my life. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son of that God. That he's sitting on your right hand. That he's seated on your right hand. And he's praying for me now. And he's praying for me now. And by my profession of faith and, in him. And by my profession of faith. Him. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm healed. And I'm delivered. And I'm delivered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved. You just made your entry into the kingdom. Heaven receives you. And now, because you are saved, you are a covenant believer now. Holy Spirit comes upon you because you are saved. You have a right now to receive him. Thank you. Sweetheart, that's all I have to say. And uh, I've said a lot, so would you close us out? Amen. Oh, absolutely. And so let me give you uh, just a few announcements as we close out. Uh, first of all, if you um, made that prayer and you just got saved, let us know. Send us, uh, um, call us or e uh, email us and tell us um, how the Lord has come into your life. We would like to get with you and help you um, make more steps. Now that you're saved, you need to know what you're saved from and what you're saved for. Yes. And so uh, we will help you with that. You can call, you can uh, and leave a, a message. You can also email us and we will contact you and get back with you. And if you want to go back, there were some things that were said that uh, maybe you didn't get because we were going too fast and you want to just um, come back and revisit Go to YouTube channel and type in Gary Deloach Ministries. Every single one of these messages has um, uh, has been uh, saved on YouTube, so you can go back and review them at your leisure whenever you have time to do that. So you can write notes when you need to. And also for those who would like to give, now we always uh, encourage those that have a, a ministry family or ministry. Uh, that you're a part of, give your tithes to your local ministry. If God's impressing upon please. you to give an offering with Praise Center Church, please, by all means, obey Holy Spirit. And that's how you do that. For the members of Praise Center Church, you already know what to do. Um, either um, do those two things or um, call us so we can meet you in person so that we can receive your tithe and offering because we know what tithe and offering does for the kingdom of God. Right. It's his system, not ours. Amen. We're just following the commands of the spirit. Also, don't forget about the prayer revival. Yes, indeed. The prayer revival, prayer, uh, family prayer revival that's going on this week, Wednesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central yes. Daylight Time. I, we're not going to ask you to pray, but just come in and agree with us in prayer because two are better than one. And we have more things that happen in the spirit when we come together. As a matter of fact, Psalm 133 talks about that at the place of unity, God commands the blessing. So come on and unify with us in prayer so we can get many things accomplished in the spirit. In the spirit. Yes, we're going to do both. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. That's right. We're going to do both. And then um, how do you do that? How do I become a part of that? Glad you asked. You just call that uh, conference line number. You uh, put in that access code. And then by doing that, you will be connected with the family prayer revival. So that's how you get that. And uh, one more thing that's going to be happening this week. Morning manifestations with Apostle yes. Gary Deloach. Yes. He's teaching on uh, kingdom worship every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Just uh, this is a series that he's uh, doing. He completed the first series. God's given him another one. And boy, you want to hear. He is given some nuggets when it comes to kingdom worship and what God is saying now concerning the importance of kingdom worship. So you don't want to miss that. Also, want to um, give you an opportunity. Someone says, hey, I can't give through Cash App or PayPal. I don't have it set up. But you want to still give, you can send it in the mail. And that's our mailing address, Praise Center Church. And, uh, that's who you make it uh, payable to. 
Pray Center Church, P.O. Box 2043, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72203. That's where you would send that. And also, want to wish all of our July birthdays mm, yes. a happy birthday. Happy birthday to everyone. Yes, indeed. And just want to um, say that this is uh, the day that this country celebrates Independence Day. Uh, we're on the, um, what is it, the... Declarate, uh, Declaration, Declaration of Independence. Uh, Independence was signed today, um, um, of making it official that we were no longer part of Great Britain, no offense, but we are now our own country. We're not owned by anyone else. Really, actually. And yes, really. that's true. And so want to um, just encourage everyone, even though there are some things you may not agree with, just be grateful and celebrate the fact that we have certain rights and liberties yes. that other countries don't even have. We are really blessed in this country. We can always get better, but let's remember to count our blessings. Amen. We love you all. Thank you for being with us today. Hope you have a great um, rest of the day and great um, holiday. Holiday with your family. Yes. And um, we will see you on next week, either Wednesday, Thursday, or even next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Bless everyone. We love you all. With the love of the Lord.